So we have an exciting treat for you here today at the Beehive. I'm very happy to be joined by Pat Brown, who is the CEO of Impossible Foods. Pat, thank you for joining us and welcome to Beehive on campus. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for the invitation. I'm, I'm thrilled to be able to be part of this. I want to start off by going back to 2011 when you were a well-regarded geneticist uh, at Stanford. Uh, you took a sabbatical and you came up with this impossible idea. When I took my sabbatical, my goal was to identify uh, the, the most important and urgent problem that I could help contribute to solving. And when I was doing my research to really think about big global problems that, that uh, uh, were unsolved, I very quickly uh, zoomed in on um, the use of animals as a food technology. It is by a huge margin the most environmentally destructive technology and in industry on Earth. Uh, not only a huge source of greenhouse gas emissions, biggest user of water of any uh, uh, industry in the world, by far the biggest polluter of water of any industry in the world, and it occupies about 50% of its land area that, you know, used to, to raise animals for food. The demand for meat is exactly what's causing smoke to rise from the Amazon right now. That's the secondhand smoke from your burger, basically. So, so that means, okay, we're not going to solve the problem by getting people to, to deliberately change what they eat. The only option available is to accept the fact that people love these foods and, why, and who can blame them. And um, uh, so we have to find a way of producing them and meeting that demand that doesn't have a catastrophic environmental consequences. And as a biochemist, that seemed like a solvable problem. And no one else was doing it. Like, I just feel like no one was seriously trying to solve this problem. So uh, there was like a no brainer. I have to do this. And uh, there you go. So essentially, so essentially then your, your behavior change strategy, which I was going to ask you about, um, the first answer would be it's substitution. It's don't ask for such an enormous change, but provide something very similar. It's, it's, it's basically don't ask for behavior change, okay? Just let's focus on meat. It's not part of the value proposition that today meat is made from animals. It's the value proposition is deliciousness, protein, iron, uh, familiarity, affordability. And what that means is that if we can outperform on those characteristics that consumers care about and make the, make the um, product from plants, we win in the marketplace. And, and now that we're in the marketplace, I think there's abundant confirmation of that. 95% of all our consumers are current meat eaters. And so at what point do you talk to your consumers about the carbon benefits of eating an impossible burger. Is that deliberate or are you holding off on that for now? It's, it's not a sufficient driver um, to make consumers buy a product unless it delivers the deliciousness and the things that they care about. So we, we message that. But I think that especially for uh, younger people, and again, this is, we, we've done a lot of research on this, um, it is more of a motivator. And I'd say in a way, it's kind of like, the first order of business, you got to get them to try our product and, and realize that this is not a veggie burger. This is delicious meat. And once you cross that threshold, the, the uh, environmental benefits are like upside. They, they, they cause it to become more sticky because like, given that this is delicious, why would I not um, choose this again next time? Because um, I get all the stuff I love and more. Okay, so lightning round. These are going to be super quick. So uh, uh, are Impossible Burgers more expensive because of necessity or pricing strategy? We're just a startup. Our total production is less than a tenth of a percent of the beef produced using cows in the U.S., okay? So we have none of the benefits of, of scale and established infrastructure. But we're rapidly driving down our costs, and we will pass those on to consumers uh, we just can't afford to try to be a growing, thriving company uh, if we lose money on every sale. So we have to price, yeah. price in a way that makes sense with our current economics. Who is your competition? Beyond meat or the beef industry? The only, the only customer that we want is someone who is, uh, if they didn't buy our product, would be buying the cow-derived product. And that's because the only competition we care about is the cow. Okay, last question. Uh, are you hiring and uh, where do they sign up? 
um, yes, we are always hiring. You know, mission-driven, smart uh, young people. So check it out. Pat Brown from Impossible Foods, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. I, I really appreciate it. And good yeah, luck. thanks so much. I, I wish I could be there in person uh, and taking questions from the students and so forth, but uh, we'll do another time, I hope. All right. Onward. Cheers. Okay.